So what we did yesterday was to discuss fully differential circuits and decide that it needs common mode feedback. Right? This is for uh, correct biasing. We have some current source from the bottom of the differential pair and the current sources at the top should sum to this current value. Okay? And for that we need common mode feedback. Basically to establish the output uh, quiescent operating point. And for this purpose we need to have a common mode detector and a common mode feedback circuit. So, the first common mode detector we discussed was a resistive divider. Okay. This does detect common mode. The disadvantage of this is that it also loads the differential amplifier. We will see how to get rid of that soon. And the question was whether you can use capacitors instead of these resistors so that it does not load the differential picture, but because you want it to work for DC you cannot do that. Okay. But you can try to and you, you should try to maximize the value of RCM. Okay. And what we discussed yesterday the common mode feedback circuit was like this. Okay. So, we need a common mode detector and a common mode feedback amplifier. Where is the common mode feedback amplifier here? So, in this case see we need a common mode feedback loop and the loop is closed from here to here. So, M 3 and M 4 themselves are the common mode amplifiers in this case. Okay. They are the differential load as well as the common mode feedback amplifiers. Now, this one it will uh, settle to a common mode value based on the current density in M 3 and M 4. Okay. You cannot independently set it to let us say 0.9 volts or something. So, it is dependent on the threshold voltage that is a bit of a disadvantage of this type of common mode feedback circuit. How do we fix that? We can have a separate amplifier. Okay. So, if we do this and have this at VCM we will have uh, the output settled to VCM out. Let me call this VCM out. The output common mode value will be VCM out. Okay. Now, the output can swing uh, differentially this if this and this swings in the opposite direction nothing happens to this voltage in the center and the common mode feedback does not respond to it. Okay. Similarly, if this current increases for some reason both of these voltages tend to fall down and then the common mode feedback will respond to it. Okay. So, we have two separate pictures here the differential amplifier made of M 1, M 2, M 3, M 4 and the common mode feedback amplifier which is this this amplifier and M 3 and M 4. Okay. How do we realize this amplifier? Give me some ideas what should I do? Single stage op amp that is what I will use. Okay. So, let me try to use that. And this is connected to the output of the single stage op amp. Okay. So, this forms the circuit that we discussed. The amplifier between this point and this point is made using all of this. Okay. What happens to the differential picture when I use this amplifier? 
instead of a direct connection? No change. The differential picture does not change, right? The differential picture still consists of uh, M1 loaded by M3 and RCM. Okay. What about the common mode picture? Let me draw it explicitly. Common mode picture I fold the in this part of the circuit I fold one half of the circuit onto the other half. And this is the common mode feedback circuitry. And I take the feedback from. So, is this fine? Can I make this and leave it? Or are there some issues with it? How many poles does it have? Where are the poles of this common mode feedback loop? First of all, this is a differential amplifier. This is a single stage op amp. So, we will have its mirror pole and zero. That will be at a high frequency. Okay. Where are the low frequency poles? The gate capacitance of M34 is the load capacitance for this single stage op amp. In addition to the junction capacitances from this node. Okay. And the resistive part there is GDS24 plus GDS22. Okay, so we'll have a maybe a low frequency pole here. Where else? Here, here we have some parasitic uh, capacitances related to the junction capacitance of M12 and junction capacitance M34. Okay, and the resistance here is essentially GDS34. Okay, what is the impedance looking down? Looking down into this. M0 is being cascaded by M12 in the common mode picture. Okay, the common mode impedance looking down is much higher than the common mode looking impedance looking up. Okay, the resistive part of it at least. Then where else? That's it. The question is what happens at the drain of M21? Related to GM23 and the parasitic capacitances. That gives us the mirror pole and zero, right? Which we expect to be at a high frequency. We may have to consider that also, but Something more important than that. Just in the feedback loop, which other node do you have? There is only one as I can see. Gate of M21. Okay. Now, if this RCM by 2 is very small, then this node and this node are very tightly coupled. But what is the value we want for RCM? Very large, so that it doesn't load the differential pair. Depending on the value of RCM, there are two poles here and they can be both at low frequencies and can bother you. Okay. So, there are three uh, nodes where you can have relatively low frequency poles. Okay. What do we do about it? 
first let's assume that RCM is small so that we don't have to worry about it. We consider a two pole type of system. There are three possibilities but initially let's assume that RCM is small so that this value RCM times this capacitance is rather small. Okay. RCM times the capacitance at the gate of M21, M21. So what do we do now? This is almost certainly going to oscillate, right? It has two poles which are of the order of GDS by some parasitic capacitance, and it additionally has a mirror pole and zero. Okay, so it will most likely oscillate. If not, it will ring very nicely. You can compensate this in variety of ways, but uh, you should not affect the differential picture, right? Because our aim is to make a good differential op amp. So one thing is we can have a large capacitance from this point to ground. That will make that pole to move to very low frequency. You can always find the value where if you move it, it becomes stable. But again, then the bandwidth will be smaller. Okay, and also the value of capacitance you need may be very large. The other thing is, I mean, you see that this looks exactly like a two-stage op amp, right? If you think of uh, this as the first stage of the op amp and M34 as the second stage of the op amp, there is some extra resistance here. Let's not worry about it. Okay. So this looks like a two-stage op amp. So how will you compensate a two-stage op amp? You do a Miller compensation. So this is the compensating capacitor for the common mode. Okay. It's exactly like Miller compensation for the two-stage amplifier. Here, the two stage consists of the differential pair you use in common mode feedback. That is the first stage of the two stage amplifier, and the second stage is M34. Okay. Is this clear? So, one way to think about it intuitively is that we want to fix the output common mode to be VCM out. Okay. For that, we need a differential amplifier and a large DC gain. So, the loop is closed. in this path okay that's the common mode feedback loop for dc now for very high frequencies if we use this common mode feedback path it will have very high gain and too many poles okay so what we have done is to effectively bypass the common mode amplifier with this compensation capacitor okay so for high frequencies the loop is just this much okay which is the same as before if you look at this or I removed that circuit, I had connected this point to this point. Okay. Effectively I am doing that but only for high frequencies. So this again is something that you see with compensation. Effectively what happens with compensation is that you want to get 20 dB per decade roll off at unity gain. Okay. So which effectively means that there is only one amplifying stage in feedback at unity gain typically. That is one uh, high gain amplifying stage, something like a common source amplifier, which has its output pole at something like GDSY, the parasitic capacitance. You should have only one of such things in a feedback loop. Okay. But for DC, you can have as many as you want, depending on your accuracy requirements. The suggestion is to have a capacitance like this. Okay. The CCCM is here instead of here. What is the effect of that hmm? what I had said was in the common mode equivalent I connect the capacitor here ok so that means that I connect it from So in the differential picture, we'll have to have two capacitors, okay? And what is this node in the differential picture? What is this node? Ground, okay? This capacitor appears additionally as load capacitors, okay? And if you can, you can, you should avoid it. The question was like, will you fix the high frequency common mode voltage to VCM out? 
and that's not a correct interpretation right i want v1 plus v2 by 2 is to be vcm out okay where this is dc so what does it mean the dc component of this is vcm out and all other frequency components are zero okay it's not meaningful to say that at high frequencies i fix it to vcm out where vcm out is a dc at the end of rcm by 2 to ground yeah from here yeah you can do that again you'll have to push it to very low frequencies so that will compromise the common mode bandwidth okay the suggestion was to have a large capacitance from here to ground now generally any feedback circuit can be compensated by hanging a large enough capacitance from one of the nodes along the feedback path okay the only question is whether it's good to do that first is realizability maybe the capacitance will become too large but more importantly is the bandwidth you will always be able to push one of the poles to a very low frequency then it will certainly compensate it okay but then the bandwidth will be limited okay. so this is preferred and because this doesn't affect the differential picture at all compared to what we had before okay the question is why do we need an op amp here why not use a differential pair with resistive loads can we do that what will be the problem instead of m23 m24 i have two resistors and this is the feedback instead of taking it from here i take it from here okay what is the problem loop gain will be smaller but will it even work common mode loop gain will be smaller because the gain of this differential amplifier is smaller but uh, will it have some basic problem exactly so you will have a serious problem there because you want this to be equal to this at least in absence of random mismatch i not by 2 is flowing here even in this what do you have to do to make sure that there is no offset between this point and this point see this differential pair by itself will tend to go to vgs of m23 that is the output voltage vdd minus vgs of m23 so the current density in m24 m23 and current density in m34 should be the same okay to avoid systematic offsets now if you have resistive loads there is no way you can even make sure of that because if the vt of this varies the voltage here has to vary that means that there is a difference between these two okay so even the loop gain is smaller maybe you will be able to live with a smaller loop gain but uh, here you have to match the voltage across this to vt plus vd side of this which is very hard to do okay and over process it is definitely going to change which means that the output common mode value is also going to change so we have to use a mosfet load and the current density in these two should be equal to current density in this to avoid systematic common mode error okay this we discussed the other day while discussing precision biasing exactly the same applies here generally whenever you make a feedback uh, system the loop gain will certainly drive the error to small value but you should make sure that at the desired operating point the error is zero okay that is there's no systematic error even if you make the current density is here different from this what will happen this voltage has to move slightly now this has a large gain okay so the difference here required is small but then you should do a clean job to start with unless for some other reason it's not possible okay you make sure that the current density here and here are the same and that's it you are all set bottom line is to make a common mode feedback circuit you need a common mode detector as well as some common mode feedback amplifier now in some very simple cases you may be able to get away without an extra amplifier by connecting these two okay but then you will not have freedom to set the output common mode to some arbitrary value you will have to settle for the settle for whatever comes out of the device characteristic okay in this case you will set it to vcm out right and uh, this needs compensation so we can compensate it by miller compensation or essentially bypassing the common mode feedback amplifier for high frequencies okay let's say rcm by 2 is very large what can we do then 
If R sin by 2 is very large, what should we do? That's what is normally done. We connect a capacitor in parallel with this. Okay. Now, of course, this certainly introduces a capacitor load also for high frequencies. But there may be no alternative. If you choose a very large resistance so that your DC differential gain is not affected, then that pole may be at a low frequency. Then you have to provide a high frequency path using a capacitor. Of course, you try to use the smallest capacitor that works for you. Okay. The reason to use this is in the common mode path we have RCM by 2 and the input capacitance of the differential amplifier. Input capacitance of the common mode amplifier. Now, there is a phase lag between these two points between here and here. To reduce that at high frequencies you have to add a capacitance in parallel. Okay. So, in reality I mean this is the common mode equivalent circuit. In the full circuit we will have a circuit like this. Okay. So, this common mode detector works for both AC and DC. This has a certain load capacitance. If uh, let us say we did not have this capacitor CCM, then what happens at very high frequencies this node voltage will not be the common mode, it will be a filtered version of the common mode voltage because of uh, this load capacitance. So, by introducing CCM at high frequencies also you get something that is the average of these two something related to the average of these two. This is in addition to Miller composition. Yeah. This is a problem with the common mode detector right. If you make a common mode detector with a very large resistance then at very high frequencies the output is not going to be the common mode it will be some very small voltage. Okay. It is a filtered version of the common mode. By introducing the CCM you add a 0. So, at high frequencies also this node is a reasonable representation of the average of these two. Without the capacitance, it is a low pass filtered version of the average value, right. This is what is going to the common mode amplifier. What is this voltage now? What is that voltage? in terms of uh, V1 of S and V2 of S. Okay. Now, this goes through the transfer function of whatever amplifier there is and the rest of the feedback loop. Okay. So, you have the extra pole in feedback. Now, by connecting these capacitors what do you do? What happens to this transfer function? We will have a 0 also. Okay. You can calculate the value of this you will have this. So, you can make sure that at the unity gain crossing again it is 20 dB per decade. At least the common mode detector is not introducing phase shift at the unity loop gain crossing. Okay. Where the common mode loop gain crosses unity, if the common mode detector introduces significant phase shift then it will tend to oscillate. Right. This is okay. To make the common mode detector work effectively for high frequencies you need to have this capacitors. Otherwise also this voltage is always related to the average of V1 and V2 because of symmetry, but the amplitude of that voltage will be small and that voltage will lag behind the average of V1 and V2. Okay, That is what this transfer function is saying. If you add the capacitors then beyond a certain frequency this is effectively an open circuit you have a capacitive divider. Again there is no phase lag. 
Is this okay? The question is whether you can omit RCM and have only CCM. No, but uh, this has to work for DC, right? The DC value has to be set to be equal to VCM out. So, you set RCM to the largest value possible and then you connect CCM across it. Yeah, the suggestion he has is instead of using both the resistor and the capacitor, I will charge the capacitance to the value that I want, okay, the value that I expect between these two points and then place the capacitor there. Now, I have to do this periodically because the capacitor will lose its charge because of leakage. Now, we are going away from continuous time circuitry. What I am discussing here is entirely working in continuous time. The circuit is not periodically switched. What happens if you have only the capacitor? There will be some resistive path to some voltage and here there is some resistive path to some other voltage. So, eventually after maybe a very long time, this will get charged to the difference between this voltage and this voltage. Okay? To avoid that, you have to Let's say you always wanted 0 volts across this capacitor. So, you have to periodically discharge the capacitor and then place it back in the circuit. So, there is a class of circuits known as switch capacitor circuits where you do this, but uh, here we are not discussing that. All of you are familiar with AC coupling, right? So, if I have a uh, And this capacitance is large, say. Okay. What do you get here? What is the average value? Zero. Yeah. So this will get charged to the quiescent value on this side minus the quiescent value on that side. So let's say I wanted something else. I wanted the average value of this side to be one volt. Okay, and this is not a resistance I connect, but it will always have some leakage paths to ground. For instance, everywhere you have junctions and junctions will have leakage currents. And I need a capacitor between these two. What do I have to do? The average value here should be 1 volt. So, I can first charge the capacitor to 1 volt and then place it here. But what happens in the long term? It will get charged to 2 volts. Okay. So, for this to work, what I need is I can't use it directly. I have to charge it to 1 volt from a battery and then place it in my circuit. This is my in and out. So, periodically I refresh the charge. So, from this point there is a leakage to ground. Okay. So, whenever this pi bar is true, this capacitance appears in my signal path, but the charge on the capacitance also is being leaked out. Okay, so periodically I refresh it with this battery, but uh, that means that it has to be a switch capacitor circuit, something that is clocked periodically. Okay, so I can't do that in a continuous time of amp. Anything else? Is there some way I can reduce the common mode loop gain while still retaining the functionality? The motivation to do that would be to get rid of the compensation. Okay. Let's say I didn't want to bother with this compensation here. How can I reduce the loop gain? So, this again we discussed in the context of biasing circuits. See, this amplifier M2 and M22, M23, M24 that gives a gain of the order of GM by GDS, and the output pole is at GDS by the parasitic capacitance. I can still have the differential amplifier, but let us say I connect it as a diode. Now, the gain will reduce to G M 21 by 2 times G M 24. That is the gain. And the output pole, where is that? It is of the order of G M 24 by C P. Okay. So, all of the problems with high gain and low frequency poles will go away. Okay. But the loop gain has reduced, that is for sure. So, in this case, it is particularly important to make sure that the current density here is the same as current density here. Otherwise, you will certainly get a systematic offset between the output common mode voltage and this point. Okay. So, you can use this in some cases. 
In fact, we will see that with the two stage op amp, this is the circuit we will use. Okay? Just like we discussed the other day with bias circuits, if you diode connect both the loads, you will still have the differential action, but the gain is small. But you can avoid systematic offset by ensuring that the current density in M24, when a current I, I20 by 2 is flowing through it, is the same as the current density in M34. Okay? Any questions on this? So, the bottom line is you need a good common mode feedback amplifier if you want to set the common mode output accurately. But then if you use the high gain amplifier that may need further compensation. But by now you know how to compensate feedback loops. So, you should be able to find a way to do that. Okay. So, one of the disadvantages of uh, our common mode detector is that it has resistive loading. Okay. It loads the circuit for low frequencies. Now, a single stage op amp whether it is a pure simple differential pair or a four led cascode or a telescopic cascode, the DC gain is very sensitive to resistive load. Okay. Because in fact, if you use a telescopic cascode instead of this, you will not get any different gain because the load will be dominated by RCM. Okay. Similarly, with a four led cascode. So, we need to have a common mode detector that does not present a resistive load. How do we do that? One thing is you use a voltage buffer, you use a source follower and then have a resistive divider after that. Okay. First is you simply use voltage followers. Let us say V1 and V2 are the two voltages of which you are trying to find the common mode. Then you buffer both V1 and V2. This is buffered version of V2 and on this side we have buffered version of V1. And we take the average using a resistive divider. Okay. What is the problem with this? One is the body effect. Okay. As you have differential swings, what happens is if let us say V1 rises by some amount and V2 falls by the same amount, the output should not change. Because there is no common mode or common mode change in V1 and V2. But what will happen? Because of body effects, this will the left side V1 buff will raise by some amount, but V2 buff will fall by more, more than that. Okay? So there will be some movement in the detected common mode. So you can't use it very well for large swings. You will have to use PMOS transistors with the bulk connected to source. So that is one of the issues. Okay, then what else? Can we use this with a folded cascode amplifier? Let us say we get rid of the body effect problem by using a PMOS source follower with the bulk connected to source. Can we use that with a folded cascode amplifier? What will be the problem? Swing limits. Okay. Again, this V1 can probably go very high, but it can't go very low because this MOSFET and this current source have to stay biased. Okay, so the input swings are limited. If you have a high swing op amp, you can't use this type of common mode detector. You can't use a voltage follower. Okay, the best common mode detector is a resistive divider because it is linear because resistors are linear, and it gives you the average voltage and it's not limited by swings, etc. Okay. Any other active stuff that you use will have some swing limitation. Let us look at alternatives as well. I have V1, V2 and this goes to the common mode amplifier. And from here I take the common mode feedback. Okay. 
So let's say this VCM out, and let's say this happened to be the desired common mode voltage plus some common mode increment. Okay, this common mode increment refers to the common mode increment in V1 and V2. What will be the current that tends to flow here and here? The incremental current is GM21 VCM by 2 and this is in the opposite direction GM21 VCM by 2 and VCM itself is V1 plus V2 by 2 ok and here also it is V1 plus V2 by 2 oh sorry by 4 ok that is fine ok. So now can we think of some circuit instead of all of this ok it produces the same currents in these two branches as long as it produces the same two currents the rest of the circuit will behave the same is not it. Now I first detect the average of V1 and V2 to get VCM and then I pass it through a differential pair and that what is the whole thing doing for me it is giving me an incremental current GM21 V1 plus V2 by 4 here and GM21 V1 plus V2 by 4 in the opposite direction in this branch. How will I get the same without using the resistor? That is I have two voltages V1 and V2 and V1 plus V2 by 2 happens to be the desired common mode voltage plus some increment ok and from this I want to get two currents and each of these currents must be some GM related to some GM how will I do this here I first took V1 plus V2 by 2 and then did the amplification using GM I can first amplify and then take the average ok And what is the current flowing here? It is related to GM21A and V1, V1 minus VCM out, ok. And here it is V2 minus VCM out. So, I connect the two together and I connect these two together also ok. So, now the currents here will be of this form. Let us say originally I had I 20 here and these two had some aspect ratio ok and small signal wise this circuit is exactly equivalent if I have half the current here and each of these transistors has half the aspect ratio ok. All I did was to split the differential pair into two parts and each side I gave V1 and V2 I mean to one side I gave V1 to the other side I gave V2 and then sum the outputs. So, this will also work as a common mode detector. What is the limitation of this circuit? Now, the good thing about this is it does not load the differential amplifier resistively ok. So, the DC gain of the differential amplifier is not affected. In fact, this is the preferred type of common mode feedback circuit for a single stage op amp, something like a simple differential pair or a, a telescopic cascode, this is what you want to use. 
Finally, the bottom line is the government uh, feedback circuitry should not be sensitive to the differential input. Okay. In case of resistors, that is true. If uh, the two sides swing equally, then the midpoint doesn't change at all. Whereas here, what happens? If this swings up by a large amount, this swings down by a large amount, both differential pairs will be cut off and it will stop responding. Okay. The two differential pairs will be cut off. Once the differential pairs are cut off, uh, the small signal analysis is not true anymore. In fact, as the swing increases, the common mode gain goes on decreasing. The circuit that you are asked to use for the folded cascode has a slightly different uh, topology. In that case, these two are tied together. That does slightly better with swing. Okay, we can discuss that afterwards. We will meet at 4 today. Right? The question is, where is averaging in this circuit? The averaging is in the summing of this current and this current. Okay, this is related to V1, this is related to V2. So, you get V1 plus V2. 